today. I'm Joe Johnson, and once again, I am joined by Kim Urbanowski. Hello, how are you? Back to the set. Thank you. How are things going over at the township? They're going well, thank you. Keeping uh, busy? They are. Things are super busy over there. We're, um, you know, trying to hire a new fire chief and, you know, get ready for all the summer things. And so, yeah, keeping pretty busy. Yeah, that's awesome. Do anything exciting this past weekend? This past weekend? No, we've kind of, our family's kind of had some, some stuff going on, so we were yeah, unavailable yeah. for the last two weekends, but we're looking forward to the next weekend. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was out of town this past weekend. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the show, but uh, there are a few things going on this, this past weekend, and uh, um, one thing that I always uh, look forward to, and I felt bad that I missed it this past weekend, the Orient Center, uh, the Parks and Rec host, their uh, one-stop shopping community garage sale, where instead of going from location to location to location, uh, you can just come to Orient Town, or, or the Orient Center and, and find bargains. Find all work. the good things right here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what else? Oh, I was at the library recently, mm. and uh, while I was there, someone said, uh, is the summer reading kickoff in your calendar? And I was like, no, it is not. Oh, boy. And I found out that it is this weekend. So uh -huh. the library is going to be kicking off their summer reading program, and that's always a lot of fun. Um, yeah, because, the party outside, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. There's Go. all kinds of events and things going on outside of the library and uh, inflatables, bounce houses, and all that. But yeah, if you get a chance, uh, the summer reading kickoff is this Saturday. And uh, basically what they do is they encourage students to not turn off their brain over the summer, <laughs> uh, to continue reading uh, throughout the summer and uh, report on the number of books that, uh, uh, that they uh, are reading uh, over the reading summer. Over right. the summer, yeah. Uh, that's from last year, and you can see they have a fantastic turnout. They mm -hmm. had a beautiful day. I uh, hope they get good weather uh, this weekend. Um, but uh, it's really great to see the property around the library just absolutely bustling with activity and, and games and activities for, for kids to take part in. So, um, And then at the end of the summer, they have another get-together where they uh, hand out prizes and mm -hmm. things like that. So. Uh, it's a fun way to kick it off and uh, encourage kids to keep uh, keep reading, keep yes. learning during the summer. Adults too. I think they have an adult version as well. Yeah, anyone, anyone yeah. of uh, all ages can take part in the summer reading program. Uh, how many books you go through during the summer? You, you know, I, I started a, a Goodreads account. It's, a, it's an app on my phone. And last year I tried to make, <laughs> this is a terrible goal, but... 12, like one a month, Ooh. <clears throat> but um, I'm not doing that great this year. <laughs> I think it's like two books I'm in, um, but to be fair, I just keep getting interrupted by random things, you know, um, but I have probably 25 books that I picked up at the, oh, the, the library uh, sale. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I was there. You know, I filled the bag and the whole thing, so yeah. Yeah, I have 25 books just waiting for the right moment. Maybe the beach, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Good. I'll do that. I have a couple on my nightstand that I need to uh, get to. Uh, I just uh, yeah look at them and go. Uh, I'll get to them later. So. Yeah, but you you do a good job reading. I mean, uh, we've talked about books a couple times yeah, on yeah. the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so I'll make it a goal to read something interesting to talk about the next time I'm here. <laughs> All right, that sounds <laughs> That'll good. That'll be my goal. <laughs> uh, now we we kind of recap this past weekend, but the weekend before that was a big weekend uh, here in this community. Mm -hmm. Lake Orion always goes all out on Memorial Day to honor those who uh, fought and died for our country, and uh, they uh, honor those of all the wars, going all the way back to the Civil War. And so on Memorial Day here in Lake Orion was uh, a whole series of events mm -hmm. and ceremonies, starting with a 5K in the morning, uh, going all the way to the memorial uh, ceremony that took place at the Veterans Memorial on M24. Uh, so I was there. I was there for all the events. And Steve helped us out by shooting some of the video <laughs> at East Lawn Cemetery. So here's the piece I put together to look back on the events that took place on Memorial Day. On the morning of Monday, May 29th, well over 400 runners and walkers gathered in downtown Lake Orion for the seventh running of the Orion Veterans Memorial Day 5K. It was the largest turnout in the race's history. 
The start finish line was set up near Children's Park and at 9 a.m. runners and walkers taking part in the five mile race began their journey. Then about 10 minutes later, those taking part in the 5K run were given the go-ahead. The course took participants out onto Pink Creek Trail toward Clarkson Road, where they turned around and headed back to the finish line on Anderson Street. Crossing the finish line first was Eric Berg of Shelby Township, who took part in the five-mile course. The 20-year-old finished with a time of 28.01.6. You know, our veterans have made such a great sacrifice uh, for us to enjoy the freedoms that we have, especially the freedom to run. Um, that's something that I just delight in and just enjoy so much is running. Uh, and I'm grateful that our veterans have created that opportunity for me. The first 5K runner to finish was 16-year-old Anthony Goathley of Madison Heights. He finished with a time of 18.30.7. Course was great. Uh, the path was really nice, nice and dense. Um, felt a little longer than I thought it would be. Um, other than that, it was a good race. What brought you out today? Why did you want to take part in this race? Um, last year, one of my friends introduced me to the race, and then I have to be in the parade with my Boy Scout troop after this. Race fees and sponsorships allowed organizers to raise more than $10,000 for the maintenance and upkeep of the Orion Veterans Memorial. It was the first time in the event's history they passed that amount. The atmosphere is very exciting, especially with how many participants we have this year. So I am excited, they're excited, and like I said earlier, we couldn't have a more perfect day for this. This has become a tradition for people in our community, so what better way to start your Memorial Day off than celebrating our veterans and our beautiful memorial than participating in the race here, followed by the parade downtown. When we first talked about, you know, this, this was an idea at the Veterans Memorial Board, which I've served on since I've been the supervisor, uh, we talked about a way to try to get younger people and more of the community involved. We have a great tradition here with the VFW and the American Legion and the wreath ceremony and the parade and the, uh, of course the uh, annual um, ceremony at the memorial. But we, we wanted to try to y liven up the crowd a little bit and make sure that our, our next generation remembers and really understands what this day is about. And I kind of joke all the time, it's not about, it's not about eating hot dogs and, and tubing on the lake, although that's really important. The reason we're able to do that is because of the sacrifice that the people that came before us have made. So to see this become a great event with families and kids and everybody wearing red, white, and blue um, and the flags. And I'm looking at Jim Hubbard, who's here. Uh, it's it's incredible. This is this is what we dreamt of, and to see it to be, become a reality is is it's one of the really special things about our community. While runners were getting underway in downtown Lake Orion, a small group gathered at East Lawn Cemetery off Orion Road for the first of several ceremonies honoring those who lost their lives defending our country. Prior to the ceremony, American flags were placed at the graves of the veterans buried at East Lawn. American Legion Post 233 Commander Steve Hawkswell led the ceremony, and Auxiliary President Sandy Boyd placed a wreath at the World War Veterans Monument. The ceremony concluded with a gun salute and the playing of taps. At 10 a.m., a similar ceremony took place in Children's Park in downtown Lake Orion. This time, a wreath was dropped into the waters of Paint Creek to honor those who lost their lives at sea. Well, we had a lot of folks who were, were kind of never coming back into this little town. One family had three that were gone. And this our little town, we love what we have here. We love our veterans. And I've been here since 1947, and we have always honored our veterans and those who have given their life. As we said, this is it. This is what we get. And this is why we have this wonderful, beautiful nation of the United States. At 11 a.m., residents lined the streets of downtown Lake Orion for the start of the Memorial Day Parade. The police department's 1941 police car led the way with retired Reserve Commander Dave Merku behind the wheel. His passenger was 2023 honored veteran Bob Mahan of the U.S. Navy. 
Following the Vintage Ford were community groups and scouts, as well as the 338th Army Band out of Livonia, Michigan. The newly added Bike Brigade was a hit with the crowd. They were followed by numerous military vehicles, and the Lake Orion High School Marching Band brought up the rear as the parade came to an end. At 1 p.m., things were bustling at the Orion Veterans Memorial as veterans, dignitaries, and members of the community gathered for the annual Memorial Day ceremony. Board Chair Dr. Joseph Master Mateo welcomed those in attendance and introduced the presenters, including Lieutenant Colonel Cynthia Wright of the U.S. Air Force, who gave the Memorial Day address. It's a day all Americans should take a moment out of the day to honor the more than 1.1 million men and women who made this act ultimate sacrifice for our country. The majority of those that had died, the 1.1 million, were certainly men. But I wanted to mention that women have been killed in every conflict or war since the Civil War. And since 9-11 and the global war on terrorism, 160 women have died in combat in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Syria. I think that's a fact that gets nobody knows about. Dr. Master Mateo also introduced 2023's honored veteran Bob Mahan, who served with the U.S. Navy. I feel that when we take our uh, oath of office, oath of, uh, for the United States military, I looked it up and it said that there is there is no time limit on that. So I feel I should be here serving my uh, fellow fellow veterans. Uh, our motto was we, we serve, the, we honor the dead by serving the living, the ones that are under your feet right here in this memorial. And I thank you for that. And I'm going to be serving our community to make it a better place to live in. Thank you for this honor. Following the placing of the wreath by Cynthia Wright, veterans took turns reading the names of those with Lake Orion roots who lost their lives during all U.S. conflicts from the Civil War to Operation Enduring Freedom. We will now go to the Vietnam veterans. Raymond I. Whipley. John A. Wood. Operation Freedom. Raymond J. Polar. Operation Enduring Freedom. Trevor Blaylock. That will be it. So there you go. Uh, like I said, Lake Orion really does come out on Memorial Day for all the ceremonies. Um, as you heard in the story, over 400 runners right. in the uh, 5K and 5-mile run. They raised over $10,000 for upkeep at the Memorial uh, on Lapeer Road. So really great day of events. I'm really happy to be out there and part of it, even though it was hot. Yeah, Very hot out there. It was. So. it was a super hot weekend. Holy cow, it was impressive. <laughs> yeah, it was. Well, back here on the set with us, joining us once. He could be a co-host. He's been here so many times. <laughs> Roger Broder is here from the Lions Club. Uh, excited to talk about uh, the big event. The big, long-time Lake Orion tradition is coming up. Uh, the Jubilee. Um, it's back. Let's talk about it's that. one of the favorites. Yeah, what is, and, what is uh, Jubilee I, I get doing a, to the Lions You know, you say I'm almost a co-host. Well, that's because of my friends here. You guys are so supportive <laughs> of us. I love it. Oh, we're happy. Love, it, love being here to get the, get the help from you guys here. <laughs> so, yeah, here we go. We uh, 
took a little while to go through the approval process, some changes this year, but uh, but we're we're all set to go on the 22nd. I got my notes in front of me because there's so much activity that weekend, and yeah. and uh, really really going to be a fun weekend. The 22nd to the 25th, we'll have the carnival the whole weekend, uh, Thursday afternoon, Thursday five o'clock through Sunday at six, oh. and uh, we've got the beer tent, which. I'm personally responsible for. <laughs> and that's the so, big money maker, right? It, well, actually the carnival is. Oh yeah. The beer tent's a little lower on the list, okay. but we, you know, we we do a little, do okay at the beer tent and hopefully we get a big crowd out there both nights with the bands to get mm -hmm. them dancing and get the get the support of the crowd buying lots of beer and stuff and we, we have a good time. We'll we'll get 3 to 400 people in there. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a fun couple of nights. We decided this year not to do a beer tent on Thursday for the first time because it just, we weren't getting the crowd, that after work crowd and right, stuff. Right. It just, so it was kind of a break even, a lot of work for not a lot of uh, charity profit, if you will. And yeah. so we decided to cancel Thursday night this year. So it's Friday and Saturday only. Okay. No fireworks. Yeah, I'm, that's a big change. I, I'm, year, I'm getting so. blasted with that one on Facebook. Yeah, no you know, fireworks. It, it was so confusing a few years ago when all of a sudden there were two fireworks ceremonies in Lake Orion. Right. And people were like, which one is which? And that yeah. happened for several years in a row. And personally, I'm relieved we're back down to one <laughs> one set of fireworks. So Come on, you didn't like lugging all your camera equipment out there twice? <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Two different times. Um, but no, so Skurbeck is back with games and rides and everything, right? Yes, absolutely. Skurbeck is our... Big, big uh, carnival company supporter again, along with a whole list of other sponsors. Uh, we've actually started a new committee in our club for sponsorships. So we never had kind of overall club annual sponsors before. Yeah. So now we do. We have a number of, of kind of that platinum, silver, gold type of thing, and um, they they. They sponsored the whole year of Lions, if you will, oh, wow. rather than we've had a few here and there for for particular events. So that's been a big help in our in our fundraising as well. At, at times when other fundraising opportunities are going away, and of course during COVID we had essentially zero fundraising. So yeah, right. it's really helping us get a lot more done to help other charities, people in the community. You know, the high school, the 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 baseball that we support, the first robotics teams in both the middle schools and high school, um, just so much that we can do. And okay. it's, it's not a concern right now. We know we, we can support those things that we want to. Well, speaking of which, of. one of the things you support is Leader Dogs for the Blind, and it says here yeah. that there's gonna be a presence on Saturday. Talk sure. about that. Yeah, well, actually, is it, I think it's, it's either four or five of our own Lake Orion Lions Club members are now employees at Leader Dog. Oh wow! Really? So, which is really cool. So the t the connection's getting even tighter. Yeah. We've had a couple of members who have raised Leader Dogs, mm. and so with all that, we were able to coordinate getting a bunch of Leader Dogs at Jubilee. And uh, that's I got to remind myself here. That's really cute. Saturday noon to four. Oh, yeah. So the if you're if dog, you've yeah. ever thought about getting a puppy that you can raise for a year and then hand it off to let them train that dog to help others. That's the hard part. Yeah, letting it go sometimes. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, we've got one of our members, uh, Mike, has raised, I think, six of them. Wow. And, wow. and uh, he's got a couple that didn't, didn't pass through the entire process, so he ends up that he now can uh, keep that dog. Family dog. So, wow. But uh, come learn how it happens. I think it's important because, um, you know, just remembering when I, for a brief moment in time, lived in Rochester, you know, being downtown and, and seeing them being trained and hearing the different uh, sounds on the, the walking signals and mm -hmm. all of that stuff. It's really, really interesting to see that process, especially like right sure. there in the wild happening. And, and if you think about it, they, they train people in how to use a white cane, uh, hence our white cane sales. Right. But they have the, the white cane training, they have the dog training. Uh, I, I believe it's leader dog is the reason that when you walk up to an intersection, there's that rough patch yes, of pavement the with red. little dots. Mm -hmm. And then in Rochester, they have the uh, crossing signals that speak the numbers, mm -hmm. that exactly. announce the numbers. Oh, right, they count down. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. count down, so yeah. when it's safe to go. 
That's so awesome. So that's that's all that's because neat. of Leader Dog. So if there wasn't enough reasons to go to Jubilee, you got There's puppies another. on Saturday from <laughs> noon to four. I will be there. Yeah. Um, now I've witnessed you, uh, your Lions Club members uh, doing the Project Kids site. It's really fascinating to see that technology at work. Talk about that a little bit. Well, we we do it the second Saturday of every month at the library, and we will have our trailer set up, air conditioned, the air conditioned trailer yeah. instead of the tent. Last year we did just our black tent and. It gets warm in there. <laughs> yeah. So we have the air conditioned trailer this year, and w uh, kids six months to whatever age uh, can you can bring your kids to our trailer and um, just simply fill out the, the paperwork. But the camera takes a picture of the kid's eyes, mm -hmm. and from that picture, just no contact at all. You don't have to, it's not a doctor, it's just a camera. And from that picture, we can determine a whole bunch of different measurements of the eyes and say that there's a potential, pretty good potential, that there's a problem with vision. And where this really comes into play is before kids go to school, quite often they never get an eye exam until it's time to go to school. Yeah. And we found kids at you know, two, three, four years old that really can't see much or they're seeing really fuzzy yeah. and it, it just, I mean, even at that age, it can change their lives. Yeah, a so toddler we, can't tell you no. if they're having trouble yeah. seeing. And I've seen these amazing videos on TikTok where they fit a toddler with glasses, yeah. and at first they resist because yeah. it's like a band that yeah. straps to their head. It's boring, <coughs> but yeah. once they have them on, they're looking at the world <laughs> in a whole new way. Right, it's they're sweet. seeing their parents' faces for the first time. Right, right, yeah. So that's that's the kind of thing that this this actually creates is that kind of a uh, opportunity for opportunity, them to know yeah, yeah that's so amazing then they, then they know they can we just we just give them a pass fail yeah. mm -hmm. and then they can take that to their doctor say this is what may be wrong and get a full-on exam oh. so that's, that's great, great. It's, it's 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 pretty exciting to hear those kind of stories from people yeah yeah be you part should of really that. go for you know some of those optometry or ophthalmology people that sponsor you like, <laughs> we I mean we've had help <laughs> because we help people get glasses yeah. and hearing aids, you know, people that can't afford them. Um, we have help, had help from local yeah. doctors with that. Great. So, yeah, they're our big supporters. Good. For sure. And plus we have eyeglass drop boxes. Another just side note from Jubilee, an interesting thing. One of our members came up with an idea of getting mailboxes. Oh, yeah. He ended up finding a place to get, he, I think he got four or five U.S. mailboxes that were out of service. Yeah, brought them home. Somebody called the FBI. <laughs> the FBI came and and went after him to find out why he had these stolen mailboxes. <laughs> Turns out he had all the documentation and paperwork to make them legal. So, you know, he was able to resolve the little FBI issue. <laughs> but uh, painted them yellow, put Lions logos on them, and there's one in. I know there's one in front of Leader Dog. There's one downtown. Uh, there. He's, we're getting these things put all over the place cool. to collect eyeglasses and hearing aids so we can reuse them for other people. Oh, that's great. How that's cool awesome. is that? We've that always had cool. these cardboard drop boxes at eye doctors, yep. and I believe there's one here, there's one at the library, various places around town. But now we have big mailboxes yeah, yeah. That's great. set up in town. And I know I got, I got to have a bunch of glasses laying oh, yeah. around. Donate I, them. I, them know I, yeah. Yeah. I know I do. I know I do because I feel Don't throw them away. it's one of those things where you know you, you collect them or you have them sitting around it's like I know I should do something with this but then it's yeah. like it pops out of you. Oh, okay yeah. so I'll go home and, and get all my stuff. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> I promise. I'm going to do Just look on our website. Actually on our website we have a brand new website. Um, one of our members just I was going to rebuild it. One of our members just newer members about six months in the club really got into it. So we set it all up, go daddy, and we need somebody to do this. And I thought he would just tweak the existing data. He made it shine. It really? is a fantastic website. Mm. I mean, I guess he was up till all hours of the night <laughs> figuring out new tricks and new things he can do. Good for him. And it is fantastic. So if you go to lakeorientlions.org, there is actually a list of where we have drop boxes for glasses and hearing aids. Oh, great. Good. So great. check we'll that check out. Uh, the last thing, uh, is this new? There's a children's scavenger hunt on Saturday at noon. We did it last year and we did it in 2019. Okay. Obviously 20 and 21 didn't happen. 
but uh, we've done it twice. This will be the third time. And the kids show up there in front of Ed's on Broadway at noon, and we give them a, a paper to fill out, and they stop by all the local businesses, mm -hmm. and they have to get it signed off that they visited that business, and, and they get a little trinket or something. Yeah. And so, and then we give prizes, and you know, we've given away bikes and other things. Wow. And then we go down to, to Cookies and Cream, the ice cream shop by Children's Park, and uh, uh, they help us out with ice cream mm -hmm. for the kids and we do our awards there oh, nice. and uh, on the little stage there whatever yeah, yeah they, nice. there's all, of course they have all their their games out yes. in front of cookies and cream it's a it's a great place it's to do this place. so and they you know th uh, they're, they're a lot of help for us so that's a really fun one and it also brings the local businesses into the jubilee a little more the goal i mean really the goal of the jubilee is come downtown stop by all those do your window shopping yeah there's a lot of people that don't know all those businesses are there so this is an opportunity to go down and visit those businesses as well we yeah. really encourage that because sometimes there's a little you know they don't necessarily want the road blocked off but get down there and shop we want yeah. people to support downtown businesses yeah. small businesses Absolutely. yeah you know like i said at the beginning of this segment uh, it's such a long time lake orient tradition mm -hmm. i look forward to it every year um, Fourth of July weekend and everything has always been really huge here in Lake Orion. And, and Jubilee used to be closer to Fourth of July, right? Now it's a little earlier. It got backed up a week many years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So now we we kind of celebrate Fourth of July over several weeks, which is fine by me. <laughs> we could do it all and, summer. But yeah, it's, it's such a great event. And uh, I've heard people describe to me that Jubilee is sort of the the coming home reunion thing, where you know kids are getting off school. Mm -hmm. People come back. They Summer see kickoff. old friends, cl yeah, classmates, things like yep. that. So it's it's uh, come back to Lake Orion, uh, homecoming sort of an event, and it's really great to see. It's a lot sure. of fun. Yeah, yeah, it's the kickoff yeah. sum of summer. Yeah. And after that, you have the you know, flare night and fireworks That's and Fourth so cool. of July and sure. Yeah. yeah. And flare night we do the week after, Friday, June thirtieth. Um, I think this year we have 3,800 flares that we bought. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, yeah, that's something to see. That's, there, that's, that's really picture, amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's a fantastic fundraiser for us. Remember, it is a fundraiser, but really we have the best prices in flares. So if you're going out and buying your own, you're going to pay a lot more. Mm -hmm. But um, the goal is as a fundraiser. That's why we buy these. And you can get them. A the, the, couple of our members are out on their boats with a big flare sign on the side of their pontoon oh, boat. Yeah selling flares on the lake. Uh, you can get them at Wonder Cleaners in Lake Orion, uh, the big blue awning, yep. and also mm -hmm. at Ed's on Broadway. Yeah. So we got them scattered around town if you need flares for your lakefront. If you don't know what it is, and so everyone understands, people along the lake line their shoreline with red flares. So as you saw in that picture, the entire shoreline of Lake Orion is just lit up in red. Yeah. It's How amazing. long did how did that start? Like, I'm, I'm curious it about It was that. a world, celebrate the end of World War II, mm -hmm. correct? Right. So, yeah, they, it was a big okay. celebration. They, they lit up the shores of Lake Orion, and they've been doing it ever since. Yeah. Really? That yeah. long? Wow. Long, long okay. time. Yeah. yeah. So it's, there you go. I didn't, re I didn't realize it was that, that long. I, like, as, as long as I've known about it, I always thought it was just connected with this, and yeah. it was part of that. Lake yeah, Orion's it's really American a part of week, Jubilee. Kind of it's yeah. just another lion's fundraiser event yeah. and yeah. it's just become huge on the lake everyone on the yeah. lake you don't have to explain it to people that live on the lake mm -mm. <laughs> it's pretty right. clear what it is and people are having parties there's bands playing in people's backyards yeah. around the lake yeah. and it's a it becomes a big night flare night so yeah. that's friday then, june 30th it's a two night thing because you got the flares on the friday and then fireworks the fireworks saturday, saturday. Mm. Saturday. it's always the day before the lake orion fireworks yeah Mm -hmm. And people will be coming all over, uh, from all over, huh? to see the fireworks here in Lake Orion. It's become a yep. really huge draw. So Yeah, and today, yeah. again, just like last year, one fireworks. That's right. No Lions fireworks on Saturday night. Yeah. 
Yeah. So come so, down yeah. to the beer tent anyways. Don't, don't, <laughs> yeah. don't forget that part of it. Go. It's yeah. not just about coming down for the fireworks. So come down to the beer be tent. A, a fun couple of weeks. There's going to be a lot of stuff going on. So it's a great time to be in Lake Warren. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Roger, thanks for coming out. All right. And uh, we're looking forward to it. You'll see me roaming around there with my camera. I, I always look forward to seeing you. <laughs> Having fun. Yeah. Somehow you always shove a camera in my face. <laughs> I, do. I don't get recognized <laughs> unless I hold up my camera. And they go, oh, yeah. <laughs> that guy. Yeah, yeah. I remember that guy. <laughs> well, thanks for having me today. I yeah, appreciate thanks it. Thanks for coming out. Uh, the uh, summer concert series here in Lake Orion is going to be starting real soon. We got the Wildwood over at the Wildwood Amphitheater. We yep. got concerts in the park at Children's Park at the uh, gazebo. Yeah. And usually kicking off the season is a North Oakland concert band. Mm -hmm. And so we have a little clip here of the uh, the concert band from a performance from uh, last year, I do believe. So let's take a look at the NOCB. So that performance, as you may have noticed, was at Lake Orion High School from their May concert. Uh, but they are indeed kicking off the concert season uh, at Wildwood. So uh, always fun seeing the North Oakland Concert Band. Yep. That so you're going to get out to 13th. any of those concerts this summer? Of oh, Yes. <laughs> I mean, have you seen the list yeah. of the free ones and then the, the you know, Orion.event ones? Yeah. Um, and the movies, too. They're yeah. doing the movies there, too. So yeah, you, that'll be fun. Don't, you cannot complain that you're going to be bored this summer. No. There's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of stuff yeah, to see. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, uh, the s school uh, year is winding down this week. I think the last mm -hmm. day of school is on Friday. Uh, that means the sports season is sort of wrapping up, but not quite for some of our Lake Orion uh, sports teams because they're doing really well in the postseason, in the playoffs. Uh, so that's always exciting uh, to see. Uh, softball, um, the, the team is uh, in the regionals against Oxford, so we're going to keep an eye on that. Uh, unfortunately, girls' soccer lost to Rochester in the district semifinals. 
Uh, boys lacrosse uh, won regionals but lost to Clarkston in the state quarterfinals. And uh, girls lacrosse lost regional semifinal to Lakeland. Uh, but baseball, boys baseball, seems to be doing really, really well. They surprised West Bloomfield in the district semifinal, advanced past them. Uh, they were one of the top teams in the state and Excellent. beat them. Uh, then they also won the district by beating Orchard Lake St. Mary's, one of the best teams in the entire country. Are they? So they're advancing to face Lakeland this week. So uh, we'll Get see how they do, but it's really exciting to see Lake Orion baseball doing so well in the postseason. So it's because you're wearing your green shoes. My green They're shoes. They're winning I'm, because of his uh, lucky green shoes. That's right. I wore <laughs> these today because uh, graduation is a little bit later uh, tonight. So we'll be there with our cameras uh, and you'll be able to see graduation. If you're not there tonight, you'll see it on ON TV and on YouTube uh, after the fact. Same thing I neglected to mention with uh, our Memorial Day uh, ceremony. Uh, we recorded that, of course, and that's going to be uh, airing on ON TV uh, beginning this week. And, and you can always go to YouTube and watch On Demand, or you can go to our website, Orion. Uh, on tv.org and watch our channel which is streaming on our website or watch uh, videos on demand yes so, uh, and one of those videos that you can watch on demand uh, we did a series of cooking segments recently okay. um, and uh, I don't I, I don't know who hosted this one but they made a Mickey Mouse milkshake which sounds perfect for summer it does it? I'm yeah. sad I missed it. So we're going mean, to catch person. it right now. So let's see how this Mickey Mouse milkshake was made. Welcome to the ON TV Cooking Show. I'm Becky, and today I'm going to make a really easy dessert. I'm going to make a Mickey Mouse milkshake. So what you need to make your milkshake, you're going to need some vanilla ice cream. You're going to need some Oreo cookies. You're going to need some milk, some ready whipped topping, and some maraschino cherries. You're also going to need a jar with a lid, a wooden spoon or something to crush up your Oreo cookies, a measuring cup, and you're going to need a blender. So we're going to start out by putting five Oreo cookies into our jar. Five. And then we're going to add half a cup of milk. And then what we're going to do is we're going to crush up the Oreo cookies a little bit. All right. All right. And where's my lid? There it is. And we're going to shake it up. And and what this does, it just um, softens up the cookies so they'll blend better with our ice cream. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put three cups, three cups, three scoops of ice cream into our blender. Three good sized scoops. So let's do one more big one. That looks pretty good. Okay. I'm going to put that aside. And now we're going to add our cookie mix. I'm going to blend it up.
pretty good. I'm going to pour it into my hurricane glass. take our whip topping okay and now we're going to take two more oreo cookies for the ears all right and then we're going to get one of our cherries there you have a Mickey Mouse milkshake. Now just a really fun fact about Mickey Mouse that his original name was Mortimer Mouse and um, Walt Disney's wife didn't really care for the name and so she really urged him to change the name to Mickey. So that's just a little fun fact about Mickey Mouse. I hope you enjoyed this segment of the ON TV cooking show and enjoy your milkshake. So that was Becky Andrus and uh, showing us how to make the uh, Mickey Mouse milkshake. So uh, yeah, we're going to have to do that a little bit I, later. I on. think we should have a live demonstration once again. So <laughs> if we could, if we could yeah, hit I'm thumbs up everywhere in the studio. It. That's right. <laughs> now one of the downsides of summer arriving, and I've just noticed this over the past week or so, bugs, mosquitoes, <sighs> insects. Yes. Is there anything we can do about that? Um, hermetically seal yourself in your house, <laughs> which we know we're not going to do because there's way too many good things happening in Orion. But I was just thinking about this because I don't know about you, but, um, you know, I have a dog that goes outside and they bring things in. Um, I found a tick in my house uh, um, me the heebie -jeebies. this weekend. So um, we at the Orion, uh, at the Orion Center here have these wonderful things that you can use. So if you're going outside, this is a, a tick and mosquito spray. Um, that's free um, if anyone wants to come and pick it up. There's a, this is a natural version, but there's also a, a version that's like the stronger version or the original not natural version. It still works. Um, but then there's also the mosquito issue. You yeah. know, people don't want to go outside because of the mosquitoes. Um, if you have standing water in your yard or anywhere, there, we have these mosquito dunks free to you for um, residents to come pick them up. So just small ways to kind of help with that bug situation, but um, you can come to the Orient Center and get them for free. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you, know, you mentioned standing water. That's the issue. These yeah. mosquitoes tend to replicate yes. around standing water. So if you can, yeah. you can get rid of standing water, you want to do that. But if, if it's a pond, a fountain, yeah. something like that, Wetlands. then that might be your answer. Yeah. yeah. My house, um, the house that I lived in years ago, <clears throat> was built back to a, like a protected wetland area and I mean we had ducks swimming in our backyard in the springtime we had so much water but it was we used these we used these things a lot and they were very helpful you just you have to put them in the water though it's not like a food or anything like that um, you put them in there it creates this thing where the surface tension doesn't allow the eggs to um, reproduce or not reproduce but um, develop hatch. and yeah, hatch yeah. yeah yeah that's the worst part of summer it really oh, is well, that's okay <laughs> well, we, we don't have to suffer that much, but um, it's yeah. okay. We'll yeah. suffer through a little. <laughs> yeah, other places have alligators and hurricanes and earthquakes. Yeah. We got mosquitoes <laughs> here okay. in Michigan. So, yeah. Uh, you know, we were talking about this past weekend. Uh, I went out of town this past weekend, and uh, the reason I went on the nine hour road trip to <laughs> Philadelphia was uh, there was an event that I wanted to go to called the Philly Fan Expo. And this mm. is something that just uh, popped up recently where these fan expos are, are taking place all over the country. And usually the same uh, celebrities move from expo to expo. But similar to the Motor City Comic Con, there's, there's comics and toys, but then there's art and all sorts of stuff. I saw uh, an unusual large number of people getting tattoos over the, uh, really? at the event, which kind of surprised me. Yeah. Um, but the big draw for me is celebrities. I love meeting celebrities. And they love meeting you, Yeah. <laughs> I think. Yeah, yeah, I do have a funny story. I'll tell you in a second. <laughs> but um, the main reason that I went down to Philly and did that drive is uh, it was announced that Michael J. Fox was appearing at the uh, the Philly Fan Expo, and mm -hmm. I really wanted to meet him, and and 
Neat is uh, not quite the appropriate term because uh, it all happened very, very quickly where I stood in line for three hours. Mm. Uh, he was in a closed off curtained area, went in, uh, they take the item that you want signed, they pass it to him, he signs it, they pass it back to you, and then you're escorted out of the, the area. So I barely had time to say hi, but yeah. I wanted his signature for my collection. I wanted to be able to say that I met uh, Michael J. Fox. Um, there's a new documentary that's out that shows that his, his condition is worsening as he gets older, and uh, oh it's kind of hard to see him uh, with uh, the Parkinson's, but he has done so much to raise awareness and uh, these events that he does where he charges for photos and autographs, that benefits his foundation. Does it? And he received, he, he's gotten like these humanitarian awards and everything yeah. because of the amount of money that he raises for Parkinson's research. So I was glad I was finally able to see him get that signature on one of my diecast cars. That was pretty great. Uh, another person that I was really excited to see is uh, Randy Quaid. Oh my gosh. Now, Randy Quaid, <laughs> you know, uh, over the past few years, he's gotten himself into uh, some trouble with the law. Bit. As a matter of fact, he had trouble coming back into the United States when he was overseas because of some issues that he had. But it was announced just weeks before I was planning on going to Philadelphia that he was going to be making an appearance. So I'm like, I got to see this guy. So I brought my, uh, my Christmas vacation <laughs> RV, so uh, handed, handed it to him. He loved it. Uh, he signed his name in a bright red paint pen. And then he admired his signature and said, this might be the best autograph I've ever done. <laughs> And I agree. It was pretty awesome. Yeah. So you know what? You should have gotten that on camera because that made, <laughs> we so we worth so much. He said it's the best one ever. He is yeah. so like. There's so many movies that he's been in that are just quotable. Yeah. Well, and, that's what I said. Remember, to him. You know. Yeah. I try to I try to have an exchange with a celebrity if I can. I want to try and leave them with something to remember. And I said, I got to tell you. Everything that you're in, you make better. Yeah. And he seemed to really appreciate that. Yeah. He was like, oh, thanks. Yeah. And so I got his autograph, got a picture with him, and that was really cool to see him. That's neat. Uh, and apparently he's going to be doing more of these across the country. So uh, look up Fan Expo online. You'll see the celebrities that are going to be traveling around the country. And one more celebrity I got to uh, visit with is Peter Weller from the movie RoboCop. He played hmm. RoboCop in, oh. uh, in those movies. And you can see, you know, he's starting to get up there in age, but uh, uh, I just just last year, this company called Greenlight uh, released this RoboCop Ford Taurus. And so I brought that with me, and uh, I don't know if he had ever seen it before. Hmm. When I handed it to him, he kind of stared at it for a little bit, and then he uh, wrote on it. Now, you might notice at the beginning of his name, I was trying to figure this out. I'm like, what did he write before the P in Weller, and then he writes Robo on the end? Well, I did a little research and found out that he has a doctorate. And no so he oh, wrote Dr. Dr. P. Weller on my Robo. diecast card. And I thought that was really How interesting. Neat. So so that was cool to meet him. Mm. There were a lot of other celebrities there. There were a couple of people from The Mandalorian. And oh, uh, Henry on. Winkler was there, who I've run into five or six times. And uh, so, so it was really neat. But I did have a funny little uh, encounter with uh, Tom Wilson, who played Biff in the Back to the Future movies. <laughs> And I was standing in line to see uh, to see Randy Quaid, and I saw Tom come through this curtain, and he had to kind of cut through our line to get to his table, and we were sort of cutting him off. And so I kind of left a gap to allow him to cut through the line, and I was wearing a Back to the Future t-shirt. <laughs> and so it, as Biff, you know, he sees me, he goes, nice shirt. And I said, I'm <laughs> glad you approve. And as he approached me, he sticks his hand out, and I did the fist bump thing. <laughs> and then when he switched to the fist, I switched to the handshake. And we did this like three or four times. And he's like, what are we doing here? And I said, what are you comfortable doing? And finally, we grabbed each other's hand, did his handshake. People were laughing around oh us, God. and then he went. But he's a great guy, really funny, uh, really loves doing these events. And he gives everybody a, a memorable experience at these events. It's really cool. Wow. Yeah. And one last thing I did, when I, when I go to cities across the country, I try to find 
uh, filming locations. Yeah. Now, I was in Philadelphia about nine years ago, and I did the Rocky Steps, and there's the statue there. And I actually wore, like, gray sweats, sweats. and a black knit <laughs> cap and stood at the top of the steps and did all that. So I got that out of my system. But there are other Rocky filming locations in Philadelphia. So I wanted to find his apartment building that he lived in uh, in the first movie. And... I'd seen online people said, it's not in a good neighborhood, so be careful. Well, we punched the address in our GPS. We found it, and they were absolutely correct. The <laughs> neighborhood was terrifying. Oh my I didn't gosh. even get out of the vehicle. I just sort of rolled down the window and <laughs> yeah. snapped a picture of the building. But there it is. the apartment on the far left of that building is where Rocky uh, lived in the very first Rocky wow. movie before he made his millions. So it was really cool to see, but uh, once I snapped that fi picture, I was like, all right, let's get out of here. But, Did it. Got it. Go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there were some other locations, but I was like, nah, I'm good. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's go. Let's, and Just we started the, the, the nine-hour drive back to Michigan. Ugh. And luckily, we had Sirius Satellite Radio. We listened to 80s, yeah. 70s, sang along. But that drive is brutal. I don't know if I can do that again. So. Nine hours. That's that's a lot. I mean, at this point anymore, I don't want to go any more than four hours. Yeah. But we used to do a lot. When I was a kid, we lived in North Carolina. We traveled by car back and forth to Michigan from North Carolina. So. Yeah. And that was like in the back of my dad's Thunderbird and jammed in with the siblings. and. Yeah, it's, it's traumatic. Yeah, it <laughs> Those is. Those long trips are yeah. not good. Now, I, I may be doing a road trip to Chicago in mm. August. The next Fan Expo is in Chicago in August, and uh, Chevy Chase is going to be there. And so I have oh, some stuff I might want Chevy Chase's signature on. And there's going to be some other cast members from the vacation movies that are going to be there. Anthony Michael Hall, uh, Christy Brinkley. Oh, uh, my they're gosh. They're going to be at the Chicago uh, Fan Expo. So, yeah, huh. I might drive the four hours to Chicago to do that. That's not so. bad. Or take yeah. the train. Enjoy uh, yourself. Yeah, that too. Yeah, that's a possibility. <laughs> uh, we're going to skip ahead a little bit. Let's go to, Tessa, if you're ready, let's jump to Quick Hits. Our uh, new intern, Bethany, put together this week's Quick Hits to take a look at what's happening in Lake Orion in the next week or so. Uh, so, Bethany, take it away. Hi. Welcome back to On TV Quick Hit. Don't miss the Cruising Down Seymour Classic Car Cruise this Thursday. The event will include classic cars, music, food, and fun. The cruise will take place from 4 to 8 p.m. at Seymour Lake Township Parks located at 2795 Seymour Lake Road in Oxford. The Orion Library will be having its summer reading kickoff on Saturday. This outdoor party includes inflatable games, a climbing wall, balloon animals, kids face painting, and free ice cream from the library book bike. This event will take place in the Reading Garden from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. For more information, visit orionlibrary.org. On Saturday, Waste Management will be hosting a free disposal day for Orion Township residents. The event will be hosted from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Eagle Valley, located at 600 West Silver Bell Road. For more information and a full list of acceptable items, visit eaglevalleylandfills.wm.com. Holly Oaks ORV Park is participating in the free ORV weekend. During June 10th and 11th, Michigan residents and visitors can ride DNR-designated routes and trails without purchasing an ORV license or trail permit. All ORV rules and laws still apply. For more information, call 248-653-0710. Attention parents, do you have kids who are two and a half to six years old? Sign them up for Amazing Athletes for Day Camp. This camp runs from June 12th through the 15th at Friendship Park from 2 to 2.45. Register by calling 248-391-0304 or online at orionparks.com. Now let's take a look at this week's weather. Wednesday's forecast is calling for sunny skies with a high of 72 and a low of 47. Partly cloudy on Thursday with a high of 73 and a low of 49. Mostly sunny on Friday with a high of 78 and a low of 53. Partly cloudy on Saturday with a high of 81 and a low of 55. And rain showers are expected on Sunday with a high of 71 and a low of 48. That's it for this week's On TV Quick Hit. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Now, normally I wouldn't welcome rain, but from what thinking. I hear, 
We need it badly. We do. I was just going to say that. I yep. mean, I'm doing the dance and everything. <laughs> we need it. We need it bad. My grass is pretty upset. Yeah, and uh, I saw a map, uh, or I think it was this morning, of wildfire danger zones right now, and there's mm -hmm. a good chunk of Michigan that's under a wildfire alert, uh, and large parts of the country are in the same situation. So uh, if you're a smoker, do not flick your no. cigarette butt out of your car window. Mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact, on the way out to Pennsylvania, uh, we saw grass fire which more than likely was started Somebody. with a careless cigarette, but uh, it is a dangerous, dangerous time to just flick cigarettes out of your yeah. car window. Um, it could get bad quickly. So yeah, the yeah, rain will be welcome. Uh, I know mm -hmm. Ian, our executive director here, was saying his uh, his uh, lawn is a lovely shade of brown right about now. Yeah, so. mine too. Yeah. It's yeah. okay. <laughs> uh, earlier in the program at the beginning, we were talking about the uh, the outdoor garage sale. I uh, neglected to mention, uh, if this is accurate, maybe you can confirm, uh, for the first time that I can remember, there's a second outdoor garage sale scheduled in August. Are you aware of that? Sure. I will I, check. I saw that on the, uh, if you go to orientparks.com and click on events, you can kind of take a peek at uh, upcoming events. Uh, so you might want to verify this yourself. But as I was looking, I saw the date of August 19th. Uh, for the next outdoor garage sale kicking off at 9 a.m. Can that's, you confirm? Well, that's the Dragon Wellness Festival. Oh. On that day. But I don't, I don't know. I can't. Okay. But if you have, listen, really good place to look for everything. Oh, yeah. The Norian Living Magazine. Here, yeah. This is like, this is the, whatever, what's happening everywhere, you know, yeah. uh, library, parks and rec, downtown chamber all that good stuff so there's a calendar in the middle and um, that just shows up in your mailbox it right it does that's pretty awesome it does four times it is a high quality publication it, it is just awesome. won an award as a matter of fact so yeah. yeah it's been four i think four going on four years or just past four years that, the, that we've been doing this yeah yeah so awesome so check orion living for upcoming events visit orionparks.com uh to look at upcoming events and activities and uh, I think uh, that's about it. Anything you want to close on? Well, I'm not gonna, uh, taxes are coming due soon, but let's talk about something else. <laughs> 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 no, that's what I'm supposed to say. But no, it's, I'm looking forward to a good weekend and, and all the fun things that are happening. There is a really good um, like 80s like hair band thing happening at Wildwood this weekend. So oh, I might awesome. check that out. Yeah, they got a lot of cover bands uh, planned for this summer concert yes. series. and. Uh, uh, one of the organizers reached out to me. There's going to be a Huey Lewis uh, tribute oh, concert. No and they reached out to me and said, uh, Joe, with your car connections, do you know anyone with a DeLorean time machine uh, to park outside of Wildwood during the Huey Lewis <laughs> tribute? And I gave them some information, and I think they landed one. No so way. If you go to the Huey Lewis concert, you may see a DeLorean time machine oh, parked wow. out in front of Wildwood. I'm excited about that. It'd <laughs> so. be so cool. <laughs> I love Huey Lewis in the news. I mean, yeah. that brings me back to middle That's school. big part Ooh. of the news. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. So, all right, well, we're going to wrap up this edition of Orion today. Thank you for watching. Kim, thanks for joining me again. Thanks for having me. Thanks to Roger from Lions Club uh, giving us an update on the Jubilee. And we'll see you again in, I don't know, two weeks. Uh, we'll find out. Three <laughs> weeks. In three weeks, we'll see you next time on Orion Today.